So how do we calculate the p-value um, using our t-statistic and our t-table? So unfortunately, we can't calculate the exact p-value. But what we can do is calculate the interval with which the p-value um, lies within. So let me give you guys a quick example. So suppose we're dealing with an upper, upper tailed test, okay? So it's an upper tailed test. And we want to calculate the p-value. And we know that the degrees of freedom is equal to 25. And you've calculated your t-statistic to equal to 2 exactly. And we want to find the p-value. So the first, the easiest example is when it's an upper tail test. So when it's an upper tail test, I use that because if we look at our t tables, it's, it relates to the upper tail probabilities. Okay. Now, I, we look, first thing we have to do is we have to look at our degrees of freedom, and we found it there, 25. So it's that row there, and we look. At for our t-statistic. So I've said our t-statistic is equal to 2. So we need to look for 2. Now obviously <clears throat> we won't find 2 exactly, but we know that 2 lies between these two numbers here. And so it lies between this column and this column. And those two columns relate to 5% and 2.5% alphas. Okay, so we know that our p-value for 2 lies between these two um, significance levels. And that's the interval. So what we can say now is that our p-value lies between 5% and 2.5%. Now, what happens if this was a lower-tailed test? So rather than an upper-tailed test, it was a lower-tailed test. And let's say our t-statistic was negative 2. Okay. It's quite easy. All we have to do is, because um, uh, the distribution is symmetrical, we can appeal to the uh, symmetry rule and flip it around and make it a positive 2. Okay. And we look it up and we get the same p-value as well. All right. another situation. What happens if we have a two-tailed test? Same deal, our degrees of freedom is 25, and our t-stat is equal to 2, exactly. Well, we do the exact same thing, all right? So we look at the same row, 25, and we know that 2 lies between these two alphas, okay, 5% and 2.5%, all right? Now, so let's write that up, 5% and 2.5%. Now, it's analogous to how, when it's a two-tailed test, we divide our significance level by two. What we do with p-values is we now have to, we find the interval from our t-tables and we have to multiply it by two. That's 10% and that's 5%. Okay, so you have to remember with a two-tailed test, you look at your interval probabilities in your t table and you multiply them by two because it's a two-tailed test. Now finally, what happens if we have a crazily large um, a crazily large or crazily small t statistic? Okay, so let's again let's assume an upper tail test, a simple example, degrees of freedom equals to 25, and let's say our t stat equals to something massive. 5. Okay. So again, we look at our we look at the corresponding row. Okay, 20 degrees of freedom equals to 25, and we look for our t statistic, which is 5. Now, where does 5 lie within these intervals? Well, the biggest number here is 2.787. 5 is above that, right? So it's to the right, okay? Now, if we look at the corresponding, sorry, if we look at the corresponding columns, our Alphas are getting from large to small. That's 10%, 5%, 2.5%, 1%, half a percent. So if it lies here, we know that our p-value, because it's getting smaller, we know our p-value must be smaller than half a percent. So that's the interval. That's the best that we can say. Um, that's about this p-value. So we can say our p-value is smaller than half a percent. 
Okay, let's try another example. Let's suppose our p-value is crazily small. Okay, equals to 0 0.5. And again, we look here. What do we find? 0 0.5. Well, 0 0.5 lies here, to the left of the first column, right? Because it's smaller than 1.316. Now, our left column is 10%. If we look at our p-values from right to left, we can see that our, if we look at our alphas, they're getting larger, half percent, one percent, two point five percent, five percent, ten percent. So if it's to the left of ten percent, it means our p-value is larger than ten percent. So in this case, sorry, zoom out a little bit. In this case, I would say the p-value is larger than ten percent. Okay, and that's about it. I hope this helps.